So what does abortion, bans on hate speech, red flag laws, and taxes all have in common? I'm waiting. <laughs> if you can figure it out on your own. Okay. Well, they're all usually friends of the left and enemies of the right. So today I want to unpack why the right usually dislikes these ideas. This is a video for my brothers and sisters on the left. Anyone who wants to understand a person, me, someone who is more on the right and why. And then at the end of this video, you can tell me how stupid and horrible I am, but, but at least understand first. And then if anything, maybe you can come up with some arguments to help defend yourself. And I would love to hear everyone's comments uh, down below once this is over. All right. So besides abortion, hate speech banning, red flag laws, and taxes being a enemy of the right, they're also an enemy of negative rights because they are all positive rights. And I find that many people don't know the difference. And I think if you if you understand and follow the logic, bending the knee only to negative rights, not positive rights, you will start to understand some people on the right a little bit more. And negative uh, doesn't mean negative and like bad. It just means the first definition in the dictionary of negative is a lack. So personally, I bend the knee to negative rights. A negative right is an innate right that everyone has to live their life and not be fucked with. Really, that's all a negative right is. As an example, if I'm sitting on a picnic blanket that my grandmother gifted me, eating food that I voluntarily bought from someone who has voluntarily sold it to me at a price we both agreed upon, I've had a great day so far. No positive rights at all so far. To maintain my great day, once I set up camp, I have a negative right that no one come up and steal my sandwich or demand that I give it to them or even demand that I sell it to them, even at a good price, even if they're really hungry. I have a negative right that no one come and throw dirt on my blanket or in my eye or on my sandwich. I have a negative right that no one shoot me, machete me, stab me, run me over or choke me or rape me. Leave me alone, leave my blanket alone, leave my food alone, leave my property alone. And then that is a negative right. Reasonable, right? I think that's reasonable. I think most people listening to this be like, you know what? She seems like a reasonable girl. But sometimes I find that it's convenient to yeah, but your way through life. I don't like yeah, buts. I don't like loopholes. If I have a way of thinking, it needs to be uniform across all sectors. I need to be able to apply the logic to all sectors with no yeah, buts and no loopholes. And I'm sure many of you listening to this think the same thing. Yeah, buts and loopholes, they're not clean thinking. It's arbitrary. Loopholes are arbitrary. You can put them where you want and it's not fair. Therefore, as an advocate, a true advocate for negative rights, I must respect your negative rights, even when it affects me. For example, if I begin to choke on that sandwich that I bought voluntarily from the guy who sold it to me voluntarily, it is your negative right that if you see me choking, you can keep on walking. My bad luck does not mean that I have a right to infringe on your day, on your negative rights. You can say that someone who doesn't help a choking person is immoral or evil or wrong, and that's fine, but it doesn't change the basic law of nature, which is freedom. The freedom to not be forced or compelled to do something that you choose not to do. If the law said that you would have to help me not die, that would be considered my positive right which would infringe on your negative right. Because in that instance, you wouldn't have any right at all. You'd be forced to do something. It would infringe potentially on your life, on your freedom, on your goal, on what you're doing, on your time for the benefit of not you, the benefit of someone else, regulated by someone else, uh, the government. Because the government's the only thing in the world that can create a law that are upheld by force, which would be policemen. And uh, they're upheld or you are thrown in a cage, or you get a fine, or you get hurt with a gun or a baton, perhaps. So as another example, if I become a doctor, it is my negative right that I can charge whatever I want to, whatever the patient and I agree upon for whatever service it is that I'm going to provide. And I can choose to provide my service or not to whomever I want to. Those are all my negative rights. After all, it was my choice to become a doctor. I went through all the work. I accumulated all the knowledge of mind and muscle memory to perform a surgery or to diagnose uh, an illness. 
or to give a shot or whatever it is. I've done the work and I can use my body in the way that I choose to. Now, if I become a doctor in the government, for example, and forces that I have to treat certain people and I have to charge a certain amount and I have to accept certain uh, forms of payment, those would all be positive rights. Not of me. I have no right. Rights of you that you can come in and I have to accept you as a patient. And you can call that growth and you can call it progress and you can call it moral and you can call it good, but because it's against someone's negative rights, it's no good. Now, here's an example of a similar scenario that might get the feminists and the all-inclusive bunch to understand why I think it's not good. So let's say that you are a diehard, all-inclusive feminist type of person, and you go to massage school because life is hard, and you want people to connect to their body, and you want to give your energy and help people find their chakras and, and uh, help relieve the stress of a hard day of rioting or protesting, and you want to help in that capacity. And you decide to go to a school. You find a good school. You like it. You can afford it. You pay for it. You bike there every day. You do your work. You become a very good massage therapist. Congratulations. That's actually really awesome. After you graduate, you choose to apply for employment at a place that you think is good for you. It's a good match for you. And you are hired by someone who needs you to work for them and wants you to work for them. And you negotiate a commission that you're both happy with. These are all negative rights. So far, we're in negative rights land. Sounds good. It's good. But then one day, years later, our wonderful government has done um, extensive research. Neil deGrasse Tyson has taken up biology and stress. And because of the Me Too movement and less people coupling up and, and more men not approaching women and, and feminists you know, being able to do everything that a man can do, some men aren't just included as much anymore, they find that the number one contributor to stress and violence is that men don't have anyone to sexually fulfill them anymore. So the government, to help the greater good of society, decides that massage therapists now are required to massage. <laughs> it's a big muscle. You're a massage therapist. It's stress relieving and it's for the greater good. So now you have to stroke. <laughs> and let's say that healthcare gets nationalized. Now the government has to figure out a way to pay for all these people who are going to start coming in for the, the massage. They need to figure out a way to pay for this. So the best way is your wage is going to go down just a little bit, just to help, just to, you'll be busier, you know, but um, just to help pay for, for that um, health care. It's just fair. That's the best way they can combat the cost. You understand it's for the greater good. Now, all of those would be positive rights. Now, hopefully there are some people who are like, you know what, Jennifer Mosky, I'm going to subscribe to your channel and maybe share it. And then maybe there's other people that are thinking, Molesky, I don't know who you are, but this is a stretch because the stretch is what I really want to talk about today. The fact is that everything can be stretched and it will be stretched. First, the government has to get its little hooks into a notion and then it will be stretched. If we look at uh, compulsory education, compulsory education wasn't a thing. It was first introduced in late 1852. And by 1918, all American children were required by law to go to compulsory education elementary school. But think about where we are now. It started that it wasn't even, you didn't even have to go to school. And now we have stretched our thinking. Now we think it's a fucking human right that everyone should go, has to go, and should be paid for by you. And you can think what you want about it, that it should be mandatory, that it should be paid by taxpayers, that it should be paid by these amount of taxpayers, that it should be blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It's all arbitrary thinking. It's not clean. You're bending the knee to positive rights. Therefore, there's going to be dispute on who should pay for it. But it's not a negative right. It's not clean. If we follow a clean line of thinking using negative rights, we'll be just fine. So let's get back to the big four. Now, now go into this thinking about what a negative right is and respecting a negative right. Forget positive rights just for a moment. And after this video, go back to loving positive rights. That's fine. But I just want you to see through the lens of someone who respects only negative rights. If we think about taxes, if someone takes 100% of the fruit of our labor, that would not be considered moral. Some people will call it slavery. 100% of the fruits of your work, of your massage, of your oil rig, 
working, of your fishing, of whatever it is that you do for a living, if it's taken by someone, the state or an individual, that's immoral. Okay, though, what about 99% of the fruits of your labor? 98, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, maybe 50, what about 40, 30, 20? The thing is, it's all arbitrary. The only clean, moral, no loophole answer is zero. Zero percent tax is taken away. You get to keep 100% of the fruits of your labor. That's the only moral, clean line of thinking. Okay, what about abortion? There are some states, I think it's eight, that you can have an abortion at eight months and two weeks. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's moral? Hmm? Okay, what about seven months? Six months, five months, four months, three months, two months? It doesn't matter. It's loophole thinking. It's arbitrary. The only clean, non-loophole, moral answer is zero. Zero weeks is the right time to have an abortion. You can't have an abortion if you follow negative rights of living things. Next up, hate speech, freedom of speech. If someone doesn't allow you to say your thoughts out loud using words, that is an infringement on your negative rights. Okay, but what if we just, what if we just ban conspiracy theories like on YouTube? So big platforms. Okay, maybe, well, maybe that's okay. Okay, well, what about if we ban conspiracy theories at work? Like, you know, I think Bob is cheating on Stacy with Liz. It's just been, I just have a hunch things aren't, Things, I don't think things are as they seem. That would be a conspiracy theory. Should those be banned? What about hate speech? What if someone says a bad word to me and my friend, and my friend gets offended, but I don't? Who gets to decide what's communication and what's hate? The only answer is nobody. Zero restriction. Unless it's calling for kill that person, kill Stacy, that cheating whore, then it's fine. Then who gets to decide what is communication and what is hate speech? The answer is no one. The clean, no loophole, moral thinking is that freedom of speech is freedom of all speech. That's moral. It's a negative right. And finally, the, the uh, gun ban. If someone takes away all your guns or the right to have any guns, that would be an infringement on your ability to protect yourself. If a guy breaks in here, I mean, I'm not a small woman, but I'm still a woman. Most guys could kick my ass. How am I going to defend myself? A gun. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what if we just take away certain types of guns? or certain types of ammunition, or certain type of guns in different states, or certain types of guns for certain people, or all guns for certain people. No, the only clear line, no loophole, moral thinking is zero ban. Everyone gets to defend themselves with whatever weapon they choose to buy from someone who sells it to them voluntarily at a price that is fair and uh, agreed upon by both sides. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what I believe in. I believe in negative rights. Everything else is positive rights and it's an infringement and it's not moral. You might like the idea, you might like the notion, but if everyone is equal, then everyone can play the game and get and acquire what they want. If everyone's not equal, then we have to make rules and protections for people. I don't believe in it. I'm equal to you. You are equal to me and to your neighbor. I believe in negative rights. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in today to learn about positive rights and negative rights. I appreciate you and I hope to see you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe or share or become a Patreon. Whatever you want to do, that would help me out. I love you. Bye.